Hey, Budget Gardeners, Rita Loca here. Join me today as we pot up some coleus and lobelia seedlings. So let's go. Today is March 28th, and I thought I would share with you my process for potting up a couple of seedlings, specifically some lobelia as well as some coleus that I started a few weeks ago. And what I'll do is I'll put up on the screen the dates of when I started both of those plants, just so you have reference of when they were started and what they look like today. For both of these plants, I collected the seeds in the fall time. So they're very fresh seeds. They're not necessarily plants that are gonna be 100% true to the parent plant, but I'm okay with that. My experience has been when it comes to collecting the seeds of Lobelia, the plants generally look very close to the parent plants. And when it comes to coleus, a lot of times the plants that are created from the seeds that I collected look very close to the parent plants. But it's also quite fun to have plants that are unique and different, plants that you can't necessarily get from a garden center. And best of all, the seeds were free to me. So I really enjoy that whole process of collecting my own seeds. I've made a lot of videos, including how to collect the seeds of coleus and Lobelia, and I'll be sure to put those video links down in the description below. But I thought it's good for me to just show you what the seedlings are looking like now and how many I've been able to pot up, but how many more I still need to pot up. And if you'll remember, we started a whole bunch of seeds in these restaurant to go containers. We did them a while ago and they really have done well. If you can tell, look how many seedlings alone are just in this one tray. And I've been taking my time with pricking out the plants. The reality is when I sow the seeds, I sow them very heavily, knowing that I'm not necessarily gonna be able to prick out every single seedling. The seeds were not pelleted and the seeds are very, very tiny. So it's always hard to know how many plants are gonna get created. And I always take that into consideration when I heavily sow my own seeds. And then there's the reality of time. I know that I have a lot of other plants I wanna start from seed, and I only have so much space under my grow lights. So I'll continue pricking out plants until I feel like enough is enough. So what I'll do first is I'll take you in for a closer look and just give you a quick mini tour on how the coleus as well as lobelia seedlings are looking like for the ones that I've pricked out as well as the ones that are in these to-go containers. So this is a tray that's 10 by 20, which means it's 10 inches this way by 20 inches this way. And you can see I've pricked out a lot of seedlings. What pricking out means is just taking the seedlings out of the restaurant to go containers very carefully and bumping them up into small little six cell packs. And this variety is called Colocha Rose. I collected the seeds last year and I bought the seeds from Baker Creek. So this will be my second season having this plant. And this will be my first season checking to see if the plants actually come true to the parent plant. I bottom water all my seedlings. And at this point, the seedlings are in potting mix that I've made myself. It's seven parts of peat moss to two parts of perlite. And I am adding one part of vermiculite as well at this point, just to help with water retention. The perlite is specifically for water drainage. And it's a mixture that I've made myself, but I modify it as needed. That first set of leaves right there, those are called the cotyledons. At that point, I don't give any fertilizer to the plants. But once the first true set of leaves appear, which are these little red colored leaves here in this case, that's when I start giving all my plants their fertilizer, as soon as I see the first set of what are called the true leaves. I always bottom water my plants and I pour the water in a little reservoir right here. This tray has a solid bottom to it. And each of these six cell packs have holes in the bottom of them. So they wick up the water and that's the best way to feed your seedlings and your plants. But I make sure that the water doesn't stay in the bottom reservoir for too long. I probably keep the water there for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I pick up the whole tray and I pour the water out into another bucket just to get the water out of the bottom of this tray. The fertilizer that I like to use for all of my flowers is miracle Grow, and I only use a very diluted amount of fertilizer when giving the fertilizer to such small seedlings. But 
You can always use your own potting mix, your own seed starting mix, as well as your own fertilizer, whatever you feel comfortable with. And also, I like to buy these very reasonably priced 6L packs, but there are some more sturdier ones out there that last longer. These typically last me, I'd say, about two to three years, even longer sometimes if I take really good care of them. And I typically get them for free from many different places locally. So you have to do what's best for you in your price budget. You'll notice that there are some empty spots here, and that's because this is a mix of different types of coleus seedlings in here. And that would also explain why some of the seedlings are bigger over here and smaller down this way. These ones are what I'm calling coleus mix, and that's exactly what they are. They're just a mix of coleus seeds that I collected from last year. The coleus mix are these four six cell packs. Since I collect my own seeds, I don't have official names. The name of this one is just green coleus. I'm assuming all it is is just green leaves with no other coloring to them. And these cell packs right here are the green coleus. That one coleus is sad by itself. I just have it labeled as a pink center coleus. And honestly, when I collected the seeds specifically, there was like literally one or two seeds that I was able to collect off this one plant. And then I collected these from a park. They had a bunch of flowers there. And they basically have like a dark brown center with a green edge to them. And these are all the same type of coleus right here. Last year or the year before last, I had started some seeds that were called Kong Empire. And I collected the seeds off of those. And that's what all of these seedlings are. Don't they look great? I love that they are all getting their first set of true leaves. My average last frost date is about seven weeks from today. So these coleus are quite small, but they still have plenty of time to grow well before my average last frost date. These coleus right here, they just say that they have a green center and a red trim, teeny tiny. And these are just more of the colocha rose. It's amazing just how cute and dainty the coleus look, even when they're this tiny. You know that game of try to guess how many marbles or pieces of candy are in a jar? I think we should do that. We should play the game of how many coleus do you think are in this tray? This tray is full of coleus Kong mix or Kong empire. And when it comes to pricking out the seedlings, I really do try to just start from a corner, like this corner here or that corner there and work my way through because it just makes the most sense. And it looks like uh, it was a little sparse in the center here, so I can always come in this way and work my way around as well. And here's a tray full of just coleus mix. I'm guessing because there's not a lot of seeds in here that I probably just wasn't able to collect a ton of seeds, although there are a ton of plants still here. And this is just a coleus with a green center and a red trim. I wanted to point out all my restaurant to-go containers. Um, I did make holes in the bottom of them. And I have to check them almost daily and bottom water them. That's very important. You don't want them to dry out. And also you wanna make sure you make enough holes in the bottom so that you're getting all corners of your tray. And it's okay if there's algae growth, if there's just a little bit. It might look bad, but it's really not that harmful for the plants. You can see with this tray that it probably needs some water because there are some dry areas here. But this is the Colocha Rose. And if I just get a little bit closer, you can see what it looks like. Here's a full tray of some blue lobelia, and that's a close up. There is quite a bit of algae growth on these. And the thing is, what I've noticed, not only just this year, but previous years as well, is that lobelia does not like to get too dried out. And as soon as it starts to get dried out, it starts to get a little bit crispy on the edges for the leaves. So it's my preference to keep them on the wetter side than the drier side. And I don't usually have losses for my plants. They're typically fine. They just need to get over that initial hump uh, and I, I don't want them to dry out. So I'm okay with the fact that there is algae growth on these. Here's another tray of the blue lobelia. I absolutely love this color of lobelia. It's so vibrant and so blue. Last year, I planted a ton of this up along my front walkway, and it was just so bright and striking. It just it was a very, very bright pop in that bed. I also planted this blue, blue lobelia in my, what I called my old arborvitae bed, where I used to have some arborvitae, 
I pulled those out and made it into a small flower bed. And these looked just beautiful in that bed as well. So I want to make sure I have a lot of blue lobelia in my yard this year. And then this is a tray of white lobelia. And the university that my daughter goes to, they had some flowers and there were some white lobelia there. It was the end of the season. They would have been probably pulling the plants out. Anyway, I just went over and I just collected the seeds from some of the white lobelia there. So it's always nice to say I never bought the seeds before and look how many plants I have. And um, when I collected those seeds, I only had a handful of plants last year. But this year I have this whole tray, which is 72 plants, and then I still have more of these plants to prick out. So it's very exciting. I love white. I think a white flower is just as pretty as any other color of flower. It just complements it very nicely, and oftentimes white pops, especially later in the day into the evening. Okay, check out the blue lobelia seedlings. Should we play that game again? Guess how many plants are in this tray? <laughs> There's a lot there. A lot to still prick out. Here's another tray of the blue lobelia. Now notice the little crispy edges. I was so sad. This was getting dried one day and they looked really, really bad. And I bottom watered it and they bounced back, but they're not very happy with me. So I, at least I have another whole tray of blue lobelia that looks great, but I am going to try to keep working on this tray. You can see this is the tray I've been pricking out of. Okay, final tray. So these are the white lobelia. And again, I did not have a lot of plants last year, which means I was able to collect some seeds, which is plenty for this year. And so these are what are remaining for all my white lobelia seedlings that I need to still prick out. I hope you enjoyed that little mini tour of the seedlings. I thought it would be good to give you an update on just how the lobelia and coleus are looking. And I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to pot up and talk to you a little bit about, you know, where I'm at with all my plants and what's next. So over here in this bucket is potting mix that I made, and that's what I'm using to pot up my seedlings at this point. The potting mix is pre-moistened, and I had added boiling hot water to my mix. I mixed it all around, and then I covered this, and I let it cool down. And the reason I like to add boiling hot water is because I am trying to kill off the possibility of any fungus gnats or fungus gnat eggs. Although I have to admit, I did find what I believe to be two fungus gnats the other day. I know, it's not bad. But um, nevertheless, that's how it all starts. So I put up my little yellow sticky traps and that's how I found them because I saw one flying around. So the sticky traps revealed a total of two um, and hopefully no more than that, but I, I'm not sure. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see. I want to know, do you have fungus gnats right now? And how are you managing them? It is not fun. It's one of the most awful things, especially when you have a lot of them flying around. That happened to me last year. And so it is part of growing plants indoors, not just um, seedlings, but even house plants. But the big thing is just getting it under control and managing the problem before it gets worse. And speaking of managing the problem before it gets worse, how many of you are running out of space under your grow lights or just indoors in general? Um, and then how are you managing it? So I am moving plants out as needed. So anything that can handle the cool weather, I'm moving out. Um, last year and the last few years, I had just kind of. Um, cheap greenhouses, the ones that you put up just for a few months and then you take down. And I sold both of them last fall with the intent of buying a newer one. Just one that I still, you know, it would be permanent and I would take it down uh, like early summer. But the, the reason I wanted a new one was I wanted one that was much longer than the two that I had because I don't love the idea of having small ones that are taller that I could put um, shelving units in because what I found was when I tried to water my plants, whatever was up on top, the water would drip down and it was not good for the plants that were down on the bottom uh, shelves. So I'd rather get away from that whole idea of using shelves and shelving units and I'd rather just have a longer 
um, greenhouse where it's just one level of plants. So that's my goal, not for this year, but hopefully for next year. So to get around that problem, um, I still need a place to bring out my plants and shelter them. I do have this makeshift rolling cart that my husband put together for me. Um, it was either one or two years ago using pretty much just scrap material and stuff that we had around the house. And it works out really well. It's quite large and I can roll it in and out of the garage or the barn. And um, like today, it's pretty very rainy out and kind of cold and raw. So my plants are safe and sheltered and they're in the garage today. But I've run out of room on that rolling cart. And since I don't have a greenhouse, I need another solution. So we're toying around with the idea of making another rolling cart. They're pretty cheap to make. It's not a huge investment. Um, so that's one thing that we're planning to do. I had thought about when it comes to these grow lights behind me, they're just, you know, five tier racks. I had thought about the fact of using those to roll them outside to harden my plants off, but I'm still using them. It's, you know, again, I'm seven weeks from my last frost date and I want to keep many of these plants indoors where it's still warm. So I'm not sure I love that idea. I might still do it, but I, I'm not sure if, if I'll do it right away. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just pricking out some coleus. My goal right now is to try to fill, a, you know, as, as many trays as I can, but I also have to be realistic that I don't need all these plants. And I probably don't have that much room in my yard for all these plants. So I'll do as much as I can, you know, and I think I'll do it based on like a tray, like how many trays of a certain color do I need? And I also don't want to get in the habit of having to bump up so many plants. I'm bumping them up once into six cell packs, but I really don't want to keep bumping them up until my last frost date. So I have to keep that into consideration too. Speaking of bumping up, there are definitely some plants that really benefit from bumping up. But I do like this whole process of starting in something like this. It buys me some time while I'm doing other projects. Bumping them up into the six cell packs, it again buys me some time. And if I need to bump them up again, then I have that time and I can bump them up, you know, from a six cell pack to maybe deeper six cell packs or um, three inch pots. So I'm kind of just figuring out each plant and what they need. So last year, I remember with my Lobelia um, that they were in three inch pots. So I'm guessing that I started them earlier and I have a spreadsheet so I could always check that, but I'm almost positive I did. I started them a number of weeks earlier and they were a little stressed out and I had to be cutting them back and then I had to pot them up into three inch pots. There, there is something to be said about not starting plants too early. Y yes, we all want nice, big, sizable plants, for sure. We don't want some puny little plant to put out in our yard. We want the plant to be something comparable to what you would buy if you were to buy it at a local garden center, I imagine. I mean, that's, that's my ultimate goal, is to have a nice, sizable plant that I can put out in my yard that's comparable to something I would find at a garden center, but something where I spent so much less money. And um, I think that's one of the big reasons why we all do what we do when it comes to seedlings, right? But uh, you also don't want a plant that's too large that it's struggling. So you want to make sure you keep that in mind. And that's why I think it's good to keep track of, you know, when you start your plants, put it in a spreadsheet, put it uh, on a piece of paper, whatever works best for you to keep things organized because then you can adjust it year after year. And that's what I did with the uh, alyssum as well as the lobelia. I definitely started those a little bit later this year than last year. And I remember specifically another plant, it's called Biden's. I remember starting that too early and it was blooming indoors and by the time I brought it outside and it was still before my last frost date, so I couldn't even plant them outside. They were getting leggy. I was so excited when they first started blooming inside. I was like, wow, this is great. 
but I still had a number of weeks to go before I could plant them outside. So that cost me in the end. And I know that's definitely true for like tomatoes. Um, I remember starting tomatoes well before I was supposed to. This was years ago. And they were getting really tall and leggy and they were falling over. The last few years I've learned my lesson and I start my tomatoes on time, not too early. And they catch up. It's amazing. They always seem to catch up. Someone once told me that they had started, um, like, I don't know if it was a morning glory or some sort of vining plant. And they started those way too early. They were vining all over their house. They were trying to bloom. And by the time they brought the plants out to plant them outside, they had to chop them way back. So I imagine we all have done that. So raise your hand if you've done that before. I have. And that's another reason why, you know, when I'm thinking about what am I going to do today, I, I know I need to pot up seedlings. I enjoy doing these little garden vlogs or little garden diaries just to share with you things that I've done or lessons I've learned. And maybe you can relate to that this year or in your previous years of gardening as well. Or maybe you're a new gardener and this will um, be good advice for you so you don't fall victim to where many of us have learned from our mistakes. My husband helps me with making my potting mix often. You know, like I'll use up a whole bucket full. And whenever he has time, you know, he'll make, make me up a batch. It's just one less chore for me to do. And if he's busy with work, then clearly I'll make my own. But that, that helps me out a lot when he makes it. And he said the other day, it's amazing how much, you know, peat moss and perlite we go through because of all our trays of plants. And he said that if we were to buy this much potting mix, um, it would be so expensive. So, yes, when I buy a big bale of um, peat moss, it's, I don't even know, I think it's like $18. And I... I can put the size of the bag on the screen. I can't remember how big it is, but it's compressed. It's a very compressed bale. And so when you buy like a bag of potting mix, it's typically not compressed. So keep that in mind. The bale of peat moss or cocoa core will be very compressed. And it just really goes so far, you know, like the, the amount of um, peat moss and perlite that I buy, you know, upfront cost might be there, but I can make so much with it, be it potting mix or seed starting mix. And I know a lot of times, you know, it's been said out there to use a high quality of potting mix. And I think that's true to a certain extent. Like for me, at least personally, when um, I'm potting things outdoors, like in pots, window boxes, hanging baskets. Um, I still do actually make my own potting mix, but at that point I'll add bagged uh, compost. But while I'm indoors with all these little plants, I mean, I, I personally feel like the seedlings look okay. Um, and I don't think they really need much more than what I'm giving them. Um, but you know, it, again, it's a personal preference thing and you have to, you have to do what works best for your gardening needs and, you know, what's within your budget. But I, I really enjoy this whole process. Um, I know the potting up can become very tedious, and I get that. But, you know, one thing I wanted to share with you is that plants don't necessarily love it if you just um, try to take the shortcuts and just put uh, one seed in a very big, huge pot. Um, they typically, from my experience, do better if you start them in the smallest possible size. It doesn't have to be a like mass zone like this, but I think just starting seeds in like a six cell pack, for example, you're going to be better off. And I and I think uh, I remember seeing a comment about that. Like, is it possible for me to plant my seeds, you know, in a much bigger container so I don't have to pot up? You can, but it depends on the seed. It depends on like what you're starting. 
Um, I, I personally don't like to do that. I like to start smaller and bump, bump up into bigger pots. And I think it's probably better for the plant because you can control the plant's um, fertilizer, the watering needs, all of that. It's a lot easier to control when the plant is in a smaller pot. So what I'm planning to do is I will finish up this six cell pack here, but then I'm gonna take you in for a closer look so you can see my process on how I pot up uh, my coleus seedlings. Coleus are very easy to start from seed and they grow very fast. You know, there, there are certain plants um, that take forever to grow from seed, but I would say coleus are, you know, generally they grow pretty quickly from seed. Okay, so I'm going to take you in for a closer look at how I pot up my coleus seedlings. So again, you can see that this potting mix has been pre-moistened. And when I squeeze it, there is no water coming out of it. You don't want it too wet. That's not good for the seedlings or the roots of the plant. And yet it's a good wet consistency where you can see that the soil mix is holding its form. And that's what you want. You want it to be nice and saturated enough so that the plant is getting what it needs for moisture, but not too much moisture. You'll see me often in my videos banging out the trays. I'm just trying to get out any excess soil that's already in here. I really prefer to have sterile, clean um, cell packs when I'm using them, but I didn't get around to sterilizing all my cell packs. So after I'm done this spring with a lot of my pots and my cell packs, I do plan on sterilizing them. The weather will be warm enough and I can do that very easily at that time. I'm just going to go ahead and add the potting mix to the cell pack. You want to press down lightly. You don't want to press down too hard. It's never good to compact the soil because when you think about it, the plant is going to have roots and the roots are going to need soil that's still somewhat loose. But you don't want the potting mix to be too loose in here because when you think about it, it's going to be wicking up the water from the bottom. And if you didn't press down enough with the potting mix, then it's going to have a hard time wicking the water up. So when it comes to pricking out the seedlings, I just like to use a pen, but you can use any other tool that you have, like a dibber or something else. And I'm going to make a hole. And if I knew that the plant that I'm pricking out has a very long root system. Then when it comes to making the hole, I would make sure that the hole goes all the way down to the bottom. But from what I'm seeing, these do not have an extensive root system yet. You wanna very gently get under the plant and you never want to handle the plant by the stem because you can break the plant that way. You wanna handle it by its leaf. And you can see here that it has a nice root system. And what happens when you handle a plant by one leaf is that if that leaf breaks, it's okay because the plant will still keep growing and produce more leaves. So don't worry about that. Don't feel like the plant is no good and needs to be discarded. All I'm doing right now is I'm just pressing down around the plant just to make sure that it's nice and firm all around and it's well supported. You also want to make sure that wherever you're getting your seedlings from, like in this case, this tray, that those plants have also been well watered. You want to have the least amount of stress on your little seedlings. When it comes to hardening off your plants, you want to make sure you're doing it very gradually. You don't want to just bring your plants out right into the elements of the wind or the rain or the harsh sun. It's too much for your plants to handle. When you think about it, the plants have been babied in your house for so long, and they're used to the environment that they're used to, whatever it is in your house, with the temperature, and maybe you do have a little fan going on, but still, it's, um, it's a very consistent temperature and air movement. And then when you bring the plants outside, all of a sudden, the plant is like, whoa, wait a minute, what? So you wanna do it, very slowly over a course of a number of days. 
And there's really honestly no true science or, um, or formula on exactly how to do it. Honestly, the way I used to do it, and it's worked for me in the past, was I would just bring them out to my covered porch and I would keep them out on my covered porch because the sun's not hitting them. And yes, they, it might be a windy day, but they're protected a little bit because they're on the covered porch. And eventually then what I used to do because I had those greenhouses was I would then move them into the greenhouses. So for me, it was actually very easy, but I don't have the greenhouses anymore. So my way of hardening off my plants is going to be a little different this year. I am very fortunate I have that the covered porches. So I always start with those. And then I have that rolling cart. So I could transition from the covered porch where the plants are out there for a few days to the rolling cart. But maybe they're on the bottom shelf of the rolling cart. Maybe I don't put them on the top shelf. So you just have to, you know, play around with that and see what works best for your little seedlings. But the key is do it gradually. And the other thing that I've learned is once you do bring your plants outside, there's a good chance they're going to dry out faster, especially the smaller the uh, pots they're in. So if you brought little plants like this, like, you know, maybe the plants are little, but the cell packs are small. There are six cell packs. And these dry out super fast outside. So just keep that in mind. Now, with a tray like this, you know, I know I'm going to be having dinner soon and I'm going to not be completing this project, let's say. I would just press right back down and try to get these little seedlings. It's almost like just get them tucked back in. Just because I know that I might not get to them and I, don't, I know I disrupted them a little bit. So you just want to tuck them back in. And a few might die. It is what it is, but as long as most of them are okay, you're good. It's almost like we didn't even touch that area. Pretty easy once you pot things up, you know, that now they're going to do much better and they'll be much happier in here. Well, we're on a roll, so I figured we might as well pot up a 6L pack of Lobelia. And I also wanted to mention that. When it comes to lobelia, as well as coleus, and even like, you know, I've planted um, begonias from seed, as well as impatiens from seed. No matter what you're planting, you want to always make sure you're checking all the requirements that the plant needs. And a lot of those teeny tiny seeds, oftentimes, it will say on the packet, but, you know, they, they often need light to germinate. Um, and what that means is you don't want to cover them. And that was one of the mistakes I used to make when I first started gardening was I just assumed all seeds had to be covered no matter what they were. And that's why it's really important to always read the packet. And if you don't have a packet or the packet's not specific, you can always check it on the internet. But I always like to check multiple sources because, you know, I just want to make sure I'm getting the right information. And the other thing I want to stress is if you tried to grow some seeds and you waited a number of days and nothing's happened, they haven't germinated, that can be very frustrating. We've all been there. This year I had some trouble with some seeds. Um, one of them was Dusty Miller. And those, this was my first time trying to grow Dusty Miller from seed that I collected. Previous years I've always had luck, but those were with seeds that I bought. But part of it too is that I put them on a heat mat and it's very possible that they got too hot. It's very possible that they dried out. So I still have time on my side and I'm going to try again. I don't want to give up. And the same is true with azuratum. I've always had luck with azuratum and I didn't have very good luck this year. It could be that I'm overwhelmed and I'm doing a lot of plants and I neglected those when they came up because some did sprout. Um, and again, it could be that they were on the heat mat and it was just too hot for them. So I will try those again as well. Now, this is my first year with a heat mat. I've never had one before. 
So I think this time when I try those two seeds again, I'll try some on a heat mat and some off of a heat mat and see which results are better for me. And you probably see I do that a lot in my videos and it's because I'm trying to experiment and see, you know, I'm trying to learn and then teach based on what I learn. And I guess what I'm getting at is I think it's, you know, good to not give up. So if you really, really want to plant and it, it did not germinate for you and you still have time on your side, what's another packet of seeds? Especially if you can buy it locally, like at a local garden center or a big box store. You know, it's worth giving it an, another try. And if time has run out wherever you live and you, you can't grow a certain plant anymore from seed because you just don't have enough time, that's fine. There's always next year. But that's a big reason why when I start plants from seed, I try not to use all my seed up is just in case, you know, something didn't um, go right. And then it gives me a chance to try again. I'm jumping all around in here. Um, and these are those white lobelia. Shh, don't tell the university that my daughter goes at that I stole seeds from their flowers. It's not stealing, it's deadheading their flowers. That's all we're doing, right? We're actually helping them out. Done. I love that green color. It's like life. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this short video. I just thought it would be nice to give you an update on a couple of these seeds that we had started together. And I still have a lot to start. I know I definitely have tomatoes that I want to start. I want to try the azuratum and the Dusty Miller again. I still need to start more dahlia seeds just for fun because I want to and I haven't done more than just what we planted together the other day. And then I still have like a whole bunch of other seeds I want to start. But I'm trying to hold back. I want to still work on some of the plants that I have here. Now, I have alyssum that I started from seed. I have three full trays of that. And that likes cool weather. And those alyssum are still indoors. They're right there, actually. Um, and I want to bring those outside. So that will free up some room under my grow lights. And that's kind of the name of the game, is you want to be moving plants out if you can. And even if it's like, again, some sort of a covered porch, or maybe you have a breezeway where you can bring the plants out during the day and then they can come back in at night. So be creative with that. Um, maybe you have a basement where you can open the door downstairs where your basement is and bring your plants outside during the day and then they can come back in at night. You know, and this is especially true if you have a number of weeks left before your last frost date and you're like, ah, I got all these plants and I don't know what to do with them, but I want to start more. Kind of like the boat that I'm in. So, you know, just kind of come up with a strategy. Um, that's what I'm trying to do right now. And then I have a whole bunch of hanging baskets that I want to fill up and I know I want to put pansies in them. And I have a bunch of pansies that I started from seed that are outside on my rolling cart. And actually, they're in the garage, but they typically are outside on the rolling cart. And then I have the alyssum that are over there that also will be going in the hanging baskets. So I kind of have a plan, and but I know I have still like some cold nights, but I still want to get the hanging baskets done. So that should be coming up probably this week. And if I have a really, really cold night, I can always take down my hanging baskets and bring them inside into the garage just for the night. So that's kind of the strategy I'm trying to, you know, keep in my mind when it comes to what's next. I want to know what's next for you. Are you running out of room? What else do you still need to grow from seed? Please drop it in the comments below. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening. Okay, I was pointing to them, but to be fair, these are the alyssum that I was referring to. Don't they look great? Like a sea of alyssum. And yeah, I still have more alyssum that need to be pricked out. Oh well. <laughs>